So, PAX Prime came and went. I enjoyed it. I, as people know, I had never been to a PAX before. Uh, it was fun. It was a good new experience. I got to meet a bunch of people. I met, uh, there was Douglas. He doesn't make videos. Uh, Kevin J2010. I actually roomed with those two. They're pretty nice. Uh, I met Chris Koshi Sushi. And he knows, I, I'm mad at him, and he knows why, because he's, he's a cannibal. He, he knows what I'm talking, he knows what I'm talking about, don't worry. Um, I got to meet, uh, I actually got to meet, for those of you who watch this guy, Greg Sky Williams. I actually got to meet him the day before the convention. We went out to look at the convention center, I'm walking back, I'm like, hey, that's Sky. So it said something to him. Shook his hand, talked for maybe 10 seconds, and he left. So I guess that was cool. Um, also, almost got to shake hands with Boy Boy. Would have been nice. Um, and on a side note, I'll get to this later. If you watched uh, the LCS stream on Saturday, maybe? Uh, there was one point, uh, ASM and Midnight were... Or watching the stream, and they actually they actually saw me on the stream, which is kind of cool. Um, now, as for things that happened, the uh, day we got there, uh, we were waiting around for Kevin and Chris to get there. Uh, Doug had this pre packs party thing he went to. And then Kevin and Chris and I scoured around looking for a McDonald's, but apparently there was not a McDonald's to be had anywhere in the city of Seattle. Uh, so we ended up being a subway instead. Um, most of the days kind of went the same. Uh, the first day I met up with Dario, uh, Dario8676, and Jess, I forgot her username, like Autumn Child or, or something like that. They're friends. I used to talk with those guys a while back, and I really should do more. Um, but all, actually, pretty much all four days, I spent a decent amount of time in like the league venue. The first three days were uh, the tournament for the LCS, and the fourth day was like community day. And that's the one time I, the day, I, that fourth day. Uh, I was sitting in the audience and I saw like a few rows in front of me, so I was getting up to leave. I'm like, hey, that looks like Boy Boy. But I wasn't sitting in on there on the aisle, so I couldn't shake his hand. Anyway. As for stuff that I got, I got some free stuff and some not so free stuff. Uh, first off, I got this I got this forty dollar poster. Just give me a minute. Ah. I got this. Uh, it might be hard to see, but I got this $40 poster. It says stuff like Year of Luigi. Made. Yeah, Luigi throughout the years, and it has all the stuff, all the games he's been in. Or rather, I guess all the games he starred in. Um, so I got that for 40 bucks, and they threw in a copy of this. I have about 11 or 12 hours in it right now, actually. Uh, for those of you who have played it, I just beat the boss in the desert area. If you've played it, you probably should know what I'm talking about. Um, otherwise, you just know that I beat some boss in a desert area. As for what the game's like, it's basically, if you imagine Bowser's Inside Story, but on the 3DS, that's pretty much an extremely accurate description of this game in the way it plays and also characters and tutorials lots of 
tutorials. They want to make damn sure you know how to play their game. Because uh, that was on the first day I was wandering around with uh, Dario and Jess a lot. Um, I forgot what all we did. But the second day, I caught this in the cube room. It's a portable seizure device. Okay. It also does this. Where, like, it changes colors. And then this, where it flashes. Ah! And then it flashes a whole bunch. Yeah, then it shuts up. Okay. Uh, I got a bunch, a whole bunch, just a big slew of lanyards. What do I have in here? Oh, sweet Jesus, I have more change in here. Oh, wait, funny a little bit, Um, and the league thing, they passed out, I think it was Riot Bacon Hawkins passing these out. Uh, some sort of, like, honor badge thing? I, I don't know. Uh, one of the things I caught was these little, uh, like, Caitlin Cupcake thingies. Uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, they were passing that out the first thing, and then they were also passing out Zig's box, but I didn't catch one of those. I also got this, like, Wii U lanyard thing, where it's got, like, Wii U stuff on each side. I don't actually own a Wii U, so it's not relevant. <laughs> and then at the league thing, I, I, I tell you, I just got a ridiculous amount of lanyards. I got this one for uh, top lane. Uh, it's got... I mean, you can see it's got Jace on on this on this side, and it's got Nidalee on the other side because apparently only ranged characters can go top lane. Uh, I got AD Carry here, AD Carry with Ash and Varus on this side. I got a mid with Lux and Brand. The only one I didn't get was support. Because, I mean, who plays support? It's not like I main jungle and support. And speaking of which, jungle. I was happy about this one. Not, not because of Vibe, but because it's got Rengar. I like Rengar because he's a lion. I play him sometimes. Uh, I also got th there was a there was this thing. If you've heard of Han, the peop Heroes of New Earth, people that made it, making this new game called Strife, and it's basically got it's got a code on the back. I mean, I'm covering it up, but basically a code on the back. Says you know register get basically I registered it and now uh, whenever the closed beta comes out I'll have access to that that'll be something I'll try out. The main differences with this that they were saying is they're trying to keep it more action oriented. Uh, they give you this out of combat regeneration thing where if you're just sitting outside of combat for a while you rapidly regenerate kind of like sitting in base in league except all you have to do is just sit out of combat. And each each character has their own courier, like in Dota, so you very rarely need to go back to base, which is kind of nice. Um, I had more stuff to show. Uh, nothing in that one. Actually, let me see if I can find this shirt. Uh, I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Well, all right. One thing I went to, I went to. Oh yeah, that other stuff is from this Nintendo World booth. Uh, because I promised Ashley I would, I went to the Sanchi booth. 
And I get, oh yeah, there's some more free stuff in here. Yeah. Um, I picked, wait, what the hell is this from? I don't remember what this is or what it's from. But I picked up stuff for this game called Charlie Murder. I played it. It's kind of like a like a beat up, some sort of beat 'em up game. Um, this is yeah, it's just a thing talking about the game. This is Delver's. Oh, the other thing was for Delver's Drop. Uh, some yeah, some games coming out on the PC. I, I I went over into the indie section and uh, saw a bunch of cool stuff there because indie games are some of the best games. Anyway, uh, I picked up this shirt. Uh, it has uh, it's got like the weather and stuff on it, and it has like Teddy and Nanako, and it says Juness. Every day is great. Then I got. Uh, this poster, something for like Legend of Dungeon. This this poster was free. They were just they were just handed it out. Um, it's like a a four player dungeon, randomly generated dungeon crawler, kind of like if you took Dungeons of Dreadmore, but it's more action oriented and multiplayer in the art style of Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. That's, from what I saw, that's how I would best describe it. And then besides that shirt, the Sanshee booth, I got this really, really, really nice Corona Trigger poster. Let me, let me uh, zoom this out for you. So you can see. I'm gonna go from, actually no, I think it goes the other way. Yeah, it goes. Here you see like Yanis and uh, Scala. Uh, this is I can't I can't really tell what that is there. That's that looks like Chrono stabbing Lavos. Uh, and then yeah, that's that's the the tree on uh, the Death Peak thing. I forgot what the words are. Um, Sarah, the Jolly Rainbow, she she's let's play in Crumb Trigger right now, so you, she can she can tell you all about this because it's probably fresh on her mind. Either that or whatever con she, she, she went. I know she she went to some con recently. I forgot what she said it was. I feel bad because now I feel like I don't pay attention. Or now women think I don't pay attention. Which is only partly true. What else did I get? Oh yeah. I I had the last day I was there. I was trying to get this uh, for those of you there they were uh, they were having something where like you could do four different quests and you get this free Wind Waker T-shirt. Um, I wanted to do other stuff the other days though, so I didn't do it till Monday. And one of the things was waiting in is to play the Wind Waker HD demo, but I got halfway through and they ran out of T-shirts. But while I was standing there, I got to talk to this Marcus Lindblom guy. Uh, then that's a nice conversation with him. Apparently, he's the guy that translated Earthbound into English. So he has this little thing here, Earthbound, Confidential, Localizing a Cult Classic. Basically, he's got uh, a book. Yeah, he's got some sort, there's some sort of Kickstarter campaign for a book where he talks about the process of, where he talks all about uh, translating Earthbound over to English. Uh, so... Um, yeah, that was about all I got. Oh, yeah, I also got uh, three of these thingies. It's the code for Arcade Hacker M and Riot Blitzcrank. Before you ask, I've already given, I've already, all of those are used. And no, you can't have the used codes because I know about that scam. I already had somebody 
I made the mistake of saying on Twitter that, hey, I'm going to be giving away these codes, and I got like 15, 15 new followers. Like, please give me Arcade Hacker M, Arcade Hacker M, Brazil, Brazil, way, way, GB Money Piazzi. Uh, I might have exaggerated that a little bit, maybe only one or two Brazilians. I don't know. Uh, one guy from the Oceania server did ask for a used skin code, and the reason why I refuse those, in case you don't know, what Riot does, they let you transfer skins to another server. What they do is you need, it's like if you redeem it with this, they need the skin code that you used and the summoner name you used it with. So if I were to give this code to somebody, they would tell Riot like, hey, this is, you know, they would use my summoner name with this code and they would get my skin. That's why I don't let them do that. So I think that's about all. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, the one day Sunday. Uh, we were in classic consoles, and I kind of, and we kind of sort of bumped into uh, Nintendo Capri Sun. It's one of those where Dario and Jess and I were standing around. We saw someone was playing NES, and it took me a minute. Before I realized, wait a minute, that kind of looks like Tim. I didn't end up talking to him or anything though, because one, him and Dario were talking. And there was some other guy who was with this son. I didn't recognize him at all, but he was kind of fanboying a little bit, and I don't, I don't want to. He wasn't being rude. It just kind of felt like he was swarming Tim, and I kind of felt bad for the guy. For, for Tim. Um, what else? The, other than that, the con was, uh, the con was fun. Uh, we kind of expected the con to be dead on Monday, because it's normally only three days. But it was surprisingly not dead on Monday at all. Except for the league venue, because... Sunday was the champ was like the big championship match between TSM and Cloud9, which you know are two really good teams. Spoilers, Cloud9 stomped as always. Um, but that day, that that was the only day I couldn't get into the league thing because I didn't get there down there right away, and it was just completely full. It was completely full inside. It's like st not even standing room only. There were people. There were a whole bunch of people standing. Oh, um, yeah, there were a whole bunch of people standing there inside. There were a bunch of people standing in line. It was like backed up all the way it could possibly be. So I had to go over to the other building by like Cheesecake Factory where they had the big, it was an annex where they had the, all the huge PC room. And they had a little area there where you could sit down and uh, watch the matches. And they had a couple rioters there. That were like passing out the lanyards. That's how I got the jungle lanyard. Uh, they also passing away, passing out skin codes. Uh, the only rider that was at that part that I recognized was Morello, or that was the only name I recognized. Uh, the other one there was like Iron Stylus and Oh My Goodness, and of course Freak was commentating. And on Community Day, they actually had Feral Pony was there, so. Yeah, those were the only ones that I actually, those are the only names I actually recognized. I think on the community day, there was like Riot Tea Time. Um, those are the only ones I recognized. There were the guys passing out swag were like Riot Hype and Riot Showtime in names I'd never heard of before. Um, Scarzard. Scarzard was there on... Uh, on Sunday, um, he was asked, like, you know, tell him his name and what he does. Like, hi, I'm Scarzard. I nerf all your favorite champions. <laughs> um, that was the day that they uh, did the live sculpting for Pizza Delivery Sibber. Uh, apparently, Moobeat was there, too, because if you look on uh, Surrender at 20, he has a little article about it. Uh, basically, it's just a skin concept that we assume is going to be 
uh, worked in with uh, the Civil Rework, or not Rework, Visual Update, which will probably give them excuse to rework her kit, which is Riot's only way of buffing things nowadays. Oh, actually, actually, no, that's a lie, because they did buff Galio's ultimate in this newest patch, 311. Um, yeah, I don't know if there was much else I wanted to say. Uh, there was some drama that happened at the con, which, I mean, it's kind of expected. As for future cons for me, honestly, right now, I can't see my... I, I, right now, I don't see myself going to any other cons, really. Um, I mean, yeah, if I were to decide on PAX East, I would have to do so pretty soon, because I believe tickets are going on sale in about a month. So... I just don't know if I want to do something like that again, because Prime in itself was, it was like $300 for the plane ticket, it's like $100 for the actual badges, the hotel, uh, my portion of it was like $400, so that's already like $800, then plus I brought, spent like $200 between food and merchandise, so that's like $1,000, and I don't know if I just want to drop another thousand dollars on the con. I mean, it would really right now. It all depends for me. It all depends on who would be going. Like, if there's enough people going that I want to meet, then maybe. Otherwise, not a chance. Like at all. Just gonna be honest there. Um, at least not while I'm only making the amount of money I'm making, because I still need to. Because I'm not. Is I do work full time, but it's not making a really big amount of money. And I'm trying to save up so I'll be able to move out in the next year or two. Because right now I'm not making enough money. Living my own, unfortunately. But what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, that's 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 all I wanted to say. So, uh, I don't know. I, I I'm just gonna stop talking now. I, I don't have any other closing remarks.